Hey internet, this is robotics and automation assignment slash project. So the professor said this assignment was under moderation for three years. I think that is code word for he's going to use the same questions for the next three years. So now the embargo is lifted. I will share you, share with you my assignment. So you're probably only interested in the questions and how I answered them. Disclaimer, since it's been three to four years and I haven't actually practiced robotics since then. Also, when I was studying robotics and automation, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. And yeah, but somehow our team just collabed together and we made it through. So all right, so I'll have all these questions in the description, both for search and for you guys to find. So assigning frames and robotic manipulators. Okay, you guys can pause the video where you need to and get inspiration from how I solved it. If you ask me now, I can't answer any of these questions. So this is the drawing. Okay. So this is question two. Find a list of links and the Hartenberg parameters. Okay. Deriving Hartenberg matrices. Um, yep. This just looks like calculus to me. And trigonometry. Good luck. I know I'm not offering anything useful. What did I get for my grade? I got A. So it wasn't bad. Alright, deriving matrix linking homogeneous transformations to the base to the tool frame. Okay. It's a lot of uh, transforming cosine to sine, sine to cosine. Alright. Cool, more derivations. As you can see, this professor really likes deriving stuff from first principles. Alright. So we start off that. And I guess we somehow find that. So we're finding angles faders man this is giving me PTSD yeah feel free to hit that dislike if this isn't helpful if you need actual robotics coaching I'm not it this is more for like struggling robotics students that just want to get through and just pass their assignments so Man, that was a long ass derivation. Okay, produce a sketch of the home position. That's not too bad. More angles of deriving. Okay. Find the Jacobian linking the linear velocity tooltip joint velocities and singularity of the robot if any bear in mind this was during the pandemic so the professor did make it harder because he knew that everyone would team up but honestly it, this was so rough 
Okay. <clears throat> Here's our Jacobian. All that work, just for that three by three matrix. Okay. The detriment is equal to zero. Trajectory planning. So using the 2.1G, we're going to find the angles. Just, yeah. Again, it's been four years. I have no idea what this stuff is. I know velocity is a speed of some kind. Blend time is sort of like the overlapping time of movements of the robotic arm. Blend acceleration. So like the change. Well, like it's a, like a shift of acceleration between the joints, sort of. I could be totally wrong. Again, four years. Totally forgot everything. Not that I actually learned anything in that class. It was kind of like do or die. Either get this assignment done or you fail the class. Yeah. Hence why I've been permanently scarred and just disillusioned from robotics. It looks fun, but when you actually do the math, uh, yeah, it's not great. Man, this is bringing back some memories. All right. I'm sure someone in the comments below will do some timestamps so you can thank them. All right. Okay, joint times, link positions. Okay. Cool. Describe how to keep a desired direction of the tooltip and make the following edge of the rectangle. Alright, that seems to be easy enough. Actually, I think I lost. I lost a lot of points on this question, actually. I think the professor actually wanted me to do it mathematically and not just show it visually. But Okay. So I'm going back up just to show you this stuff all right so yeah I did actually lose like I think 10 points out of a hundred out of this so I think that's why hey yeah, I was happy with the A considering I basically forgot everything and as soon as that class was over yeah I never used this stuff and just describing it physically I don't think the professor liked that he's a very math heavy guy he doesn't like reading all right so he did give me some points for describing it and showing pictures of how the robotic welder was actually doing the welding I right. fear that's at least I got some points but yeah um, for this question he actually solve the mathematical thing but he wasn't clear he didn't say solve he just said describe to me describe means like you use words to describe but his definition of describe was you mathematically solve it with a position in mind Anyways, um, so just for cautionary purposes, don't do what I did and 
take screenshots of positions and describe it. That's not what he wanted. And yeah, so I think it was like a 10 point question. I only got five points for describing it physically. So maybe if I had math, I would have got full points. But I spent a lot of time describing it, even without math. Like, I think at that point, I kind of knew what I was talking about. Because all this uh, robot was doing was basically you're welding a metal table together. So, like, I knew how that works. And it was a rectangle, so it only had four positions to move. So I knew it that much. Okay, I knew that much. Alright, conclusion. Um, that was a half ass conclusion. As you know, final year of your senior year of mechanical engineering, you got so many projects, so many assignments, Plus, on top of that, you got a final year project. Um, yes. I don't know how I got an A, but I bet it was mostly because solving all that stuff beforehand, before doing the robotics bit. There's also a code as well, but that code no longer exists. It also, I don't think it worked. So, actually, yes, confirmed. Um, I'm pretty sure I got zero for coding because I think the code caused the robot to crash. Yeah, fair enough. If you cause a robot to crash, you deserve zero. But even with all those penalties, we still got an A. All right. We'll go we'll pass through one more time. So, you can forget about introduction, like, the professor didn't care about introduction or conclusion. He already knew the final outcome, so it's like, just prove to me what I already know. So, we're just going through again, and we'll end the video after that. And as you can tell, I wasn't very fond of this professor, just because... He was not the best in teaching, but he was good at his job. Very specialized. So he's not a good teacher, but he's good at his robotics. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would not recommend taking robotics and automation if you're a mechanical engineer. If you don't want to have PTSD and have like a mini heart attack, take something else. Just take something easy. That's your final year. Just like, let's be real. Unless you're hardcore into robotics and you're going to be in that field forever, don't take it. Just do something like commerce or management or something ironically if you take a management class you don't actually they don't teach you how to manage people which is like the most important thing it's like managing assets and stuff like that or optimizing workflow which is valuable I'll give you that but at the same time Communicating people is like the key thing with management. Of course, understanding what needs to be done and setting a priority to each task, that's definitely part of management too. All right. See, I'm just commentating over my traumatic experience in my final year of mechanical engineering. I'm not actually talking about robotics, so I know most people are gonna dislike this. Like I said, this is for the struggling robotic students and just want to get through the class and like just get like a C minus because they were foolish enough to take robotics and automation. So for all of you that actually want to learn robotics, I'm sorry, I can't teach you. All right. 
are we almost done? It's a lot to get through as well. So this was an entire semester's work. And honestly I spent more time doing this than doing my final year project. Like, that was so bad. I should not have picked this paper. I should have picked something else. Do I regret it? Honestly, it wouldn't have changed my GPA one or the other. Getting an A or getting a C minus, like, it didn't matter. Where I ended up, no one asked for my GPA. Yeah. It's more like when you get into the workforce, can you do this? It's like a grade on a piece of, or on a PDF rather, piece of paper. No one cared. They literally said, so can you use SolidWorks? Yeah, show us. All right, cool. Looks like you got the job. They don't care about your grades, unless it's like a large corporate shifting through hundreds of people. If you're working for like a small company, they would ask you, can you do this? Show us. Alright. And if your personality is pretty good, then you're pretty much good to go for jobs. Alright, well, that is the end of it. Thanks for watching, hope you had a great day, be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring the bell, turn on all notifications. All the questions are in the description for search purposes. Someone in the comments will probably do a timestamp. Alright, until next time, see ya.